Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, The Gentleman Reviewer. As always, thanks for tuning in and please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. Continue to help my channel keep growing. I'd greatly appreciate it. So, one of the things that you might have noticed if you're kind of perusing through my social media channels is I really like the color blue. I mean, primarily that's an aesthetic choice. I've just I grew up liking the color blue. Most of the things that I buy tend to be blue. Some of the other colors I really like, that's probably pretty obvious, is black, uh, purple, and a grayish or silver. And I just tend to stick to those. <clears throat> I don't often try it out into somewhere else, mostly because I'm just not going to enjoy using it. <clears throat> Secondly, you know, I, I, given that I work in a professional setting, coming in with a bright purple, I mean bright purple maybe would be okay, but just a really out of the world pen might be looked on a little a little poorly. Another reason is, especially around when it comes to ink colors, I'm filling out a lot of applications with people to get like public benefits, housing, something like that. And <clears throat> you, you just can't use like the Krishna gold fish gold, you just can't use that on those applications, it'll get thrown in the trash. You really need to use black or blue. So. <clears throat> First of all, with my aesthetic preferences and my considerations for work, picking out a blue ink is very important, or not very important, but I want to find one that I really like. Using a blue ink is important might be a better way to put it. So, you know, I'll, I'll find, I'll try to look at some articles saying, you know, what's the best blue ink out there. Obviously, you're going to come up with the Irishizuku Khan Pecky, and I've come across the Pelican 4001 a few times. So I decided I'd give it a shot. And naturally, with my blue Twisby Eco, I just had to fill it up with an awesome blue ink. Because, you know, that's what you do when you have a blue pen. You put blue ink in it. No, I'm kidding. I'm just one of those weirdos that really likes to keep blue pens with blue ink. Um, but again, if I like blue, I'm going to have a lot of blue stuff. So, just a little side note. So, the Pelican 4001 ink has been around for well over 100 years. So, Pelican's had quite a bit of time to put a lot of thought into making a good quality fountain pen ink. They advertise that these are going to be, this ink, this line of ink is going to be great for their Pelican brand pens, keep them working well, keep them in good working order and everything. So those benefits aren't going to be lost on like a Twisby or Pilot or something like that. You're going to get the benefits out of it that you would get in a Pelican. Um, and just, here's my side note, the uh, Koenig's Blau or Royal Blue actually comes from King George III. I guess he wanted to create <clears throat> a blue that was worthy of royalty or something along those lines. and Or maybe it was just a color. I'm not sure if he wanted the blue. But uh, over time he found that this blue was one that suited him the best. And so therefore it became royal blue and is associated with King George III. If you check out my blog, which will be linked in the description down below, um, I linked an article to um, a uh, blog by Internet Ink that you might find interesting if you like history around inks and stuff like that. So like I said, they've been, re they've been um, making this ink for well over 100 years, so they've had a lot of time to not only make a good quality ink, but one that's going to you know, be gentle on your pens and just look great. So now that I'm done with the history of that, um, Overall, I mean, I think the blue ink just looks awesome, and if you put it in with the Twisby pen, it just, I really like how it complements the blue highlights of the cap and the plunge, I don't know, plungy twister thing, whatever. Um, but it just looks great on paper as a whole. I mean, it's a very dark, vivid blue with some purple hints that you can especially see on the second pass over on my swab. I did the first one on the bottom, so you get it really dark over here. It looks like there's some slight sheen. This ink isn't advertised as having sheen, so I don't know what that would be, but there was a lot of ink there when I swabbed it, and it just, you know, I guess it just dried that way. <coughs> oh, sorry. Like I said, I'm still getting over that cold. Same cold from my last video. So, um, just some of the stats on this pen. Like I said, I use a Twisby Eco with an extra fine nib. And I've had the ink in this pen for a good couple months, so I've been able to use it quite a bit. I filled it up two, maybe three times. And this is a Rhodia dot pad. This is what I tend to put my ink reviews on so far. So I did a dry time test, you know, 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, and 12. It seems to do well between, between the 10 and 12 second mark, which is fairly quick. I mean, Goulet Pens rated this ink as fairly quick drying, if you check out their website. 
and with the shading you can see that it doesn't really like there's not really a sheen but the shading does bring out some of that purple purplish hint that you see there um, with a glass dip pen it really looks like a deeper purple um, a heavy dark blue with deep purple in it um, it really did not stand up to the water drop test pretty much at all um, like you can see where I dropped the ink and let it sit for even just a short maybe I think it was 20 or 30 seconds I didn't time it but it wasn't on there for very long and then as I wiped it away you can see it just brought a lot of ink with it especially over like here and this is dragging from a dot that was all the way over on this side of the grid I did so I tend to use a dip pen a glass dip pen I already covered the glass dip pen but the dip pen makes it very light. I found that the dip pen I bought was fairly low quality. I got it on a sale, so it's not. I don't like it very much. And then I used a very broad nib of a dip pen here and just kind of drew over it and then drew it out because it just put a ton of ink on the paper. Um, and again, you can really see that purple shade. So it's performance on a variety of papers. Um, just like I did with the last ink review, I purchased Goulet Pen's notebook sampler, which has a variety of just high quality papers so you can get a good idea of what you want out of a paper or what you like in the notebooks. And I mean, it performed well across the board. Um, I'll just flip through it while I'm talking so you can see how it did. That first one was Claire Fontaine. This one's a Nemesine B7. Um, you can see there's no, shape, no uh, feathering on it. Um, this is an Apica CD5. My cursor's getting worse because I haven't been practicing it. So, the Rhodia number 12, one of my favorite notepads that came with that little uh, package. And then a Traveler's Company notebook. These just seem really interesting, and I need to look more into Traveler's Company. And last but not <coughs> last but not least, Goulet Pen's notebook with Tama River. I just seem to keep screwing up my writing on the Goulet Pens notebook, so it's always fun. Even on, so I don't have any with me, but I was at work today and I tried it on some extra cheap paper, like copy paper, the cheapest you could find, because I guess I work for a nonprofit, and you know, you gotta save money. And even on really cheap copy paper, it didn't feather. And then this is my day timer, so you can see the Pelican Royal Blue. It's my day timer at a glance planner, which is very thin, cheap paper. A lot of my pens, like the Jin Howick 750 with uh, Diamine Oxblood in it, just feathered horribly. Monteverdi did well, Noodler's Tchaikovsky did well, Pelican did really well, actually. So. It performs well across the board, I would say. If you're looking for an ink that um, you need to use in a professional environment, that you need to handle a wide variety of papers from cheap notebooks all the way to whatever you're carrying for every day, like a good Loistrum. I did try it on a Loistrum and obviously it performed well. So if you're using it for pretty much anything, it, it should perform well. Um, shouldn't feather. If, if it does, it's not very much at all. A lot of this could be that I have an extra fine nib, which doesn't tend to put down a lot of ink. However, um, it is a fairly dry writer, so it flows through the pen well. One of my favorite things about it, um, when I've let this pen sit for a little while, it doesn't seem to stain the size like the Krishna Goldfish Gold did. And so your pen's going to be clean after you use it, and you're going to be able to put some other ink in there without worrying that it's going to pick up some of the other features. So but yeah, that's all I've got. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. Oh, sorry. This ink tends to run about 11 to $15, depending on where you buy it and the color that you get. So for 62.5 milliliters or two ounces, solid ink price. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just great. I haven't, um, I think I've covered everything at this point. So if I missed anything, please feel free to ask below. And as always, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you all.